This is a video abstract for a paper published in July 2018, titled Layer 1 Interneurons Sharpen Sensory Maps During Neonatal Development. Hi, I'm Alicia Che, postdoc in Dr. Natalia DeMarco Garcia's lab at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York City. Our lab is interested in understanding the emergent connectivity of different interneuron cell types as they integrate into cortical circuits. During early postnatal days, the neuronal networks, including those in sensory areas, is dominated by spontaneous activities. One of the particularly interesting questions is how these spontaneous activities that arise from intrinsic programs interact with the early sensory experience to shape the topographic representation of the external world in our brain. In the barrel cortex, sensory inputs can trigger barrel-specific activity from birth, so we choose to use this system to address this question. Specifically, we're interested in how these activities map onto genetically defined developing interneurons. We use longitudinal in vivo calcium imaging in unanesthetized mouse pups to monitor the activity of interneuron types and excitatory cells by crossing different cell type specific Cree mouse lines with the Cree dependent GCAM 6S mouse line. We found layer one interneurons delineated by the expression of 5-HT3A serotonin receptors and relin show the highest degree of spontaneous synchrony among other interneuron types and excitatory cells. These interneurons show infrequent events of long duration that involve most cells within the field of view. On the other hand, EMX1 excitatory cells, for instance, had more frequent calcium transients than relin interneurons. Their activity was correlated between closely opposed cells, which is consistent with what have been previously described, but fewer EMX1 neurons participated in large-scale synchronous events, which led to lower overall correlation. The activity of layer 1 relin interneurons at P6 becomes decorrelated at P12, suggesting that these interneurons go through a robust developmental desynchronization from the first to the second postnatal week. We use the monosynaptic rabies tracing technique to identify the developmental changes in the connectivities of these cells. To do this, we first electroplated a TVA plasmid driven by the DLX56 promoter on embryonic day 15.5 to target reeling interneurons, then injected a recombinant rabies virus into S1. We found a large portion of thalamic inputs, in particular VPM inputs, to reeling interneurons at the end of the first postnatal week. The proportion of VPM inputs also decreased significantly from the first to second postnatal week. We then selectively altered the thalamocortical inputs onto reeling interneurons genetically by crossing 5-HT3AR recrete mice with NR1 flux fox mice based on our previous work indicating that NMDA receptors are enriched in thalamocortical synapses. As expected, NMDA receptor knockdown in 5-HT3AR reeling interneurons significantly decreases synchrony at P6. Since superficial 5-HT3AR relin interneurons can innervate and inhibit a large number of layer 2-3 pyramidal cells in a mature animal through volume transmission, we hypothesize that these interneurons can contribute to the formation of sensory maps by inhibiting the spontaneous activities in pyramidal cells. To test this hypothesis, we image pyramidal cells in the 5-HT3A Cree and R1 flux fox mice in which the superficial interneuron networks are dysfunctional. To target possible postsynaptic partners of really interneurons, we injected a AAV GCAM 6S virus driven by the synapsin promoter at P0 and analyzed calcium responses to air puff whisker stimulation at P7. We found that sensory stimulation evoked a higher rate of network events and more cells participating in these network events in mutant mice compared to controls without affecting spontaneous activity. The correlation between distant cell pairs was consistently higher, suggesting that co-active neurons occupy larger areas in mutant mice. The aberrant activation of pyramidal cells also leads to anatomical defects as we found a significant expansion in the total bare area, accompanied by a decrease in bare septa width in the mutant mice. To determine whether deletion of NMDA receptors in 5-HT3AR relin interneurons have a long-lasting impact on behavior, 
We perform the whisker-dependent texture discrimination task in which the mouse's ability to differentiate 80 versus 180 grit sandpaper was tested. We found that NR1 knockdown in reeling interneurons leads to an impairment in tactile discrimination measured by discrimination index DI, but not in exploratory behavior. These results show that early dysfunction of reeling interneurons leads to deficits in baromat formation and long-lasting behavior deficits. So based on our data, we propose a model by which L1 interneurons activated by thalamic impulse suppress spontaneous microdominance in pyramidal cells and promote the development of barrel columns tuned to individual whiskers. The activation of a superficial network is crucial as it occurs at a developmental stage when connectivity from deep to superficial layers is had yet to mature. How do these findings relate to human pathological conditions? Elevated network synchrony is frequently observed in mouse models of neurodevelopmental disorders. We hope that our findings will help elucidate cell-type-specific network dysfunction in these disorders.